Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son was lifted on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper, shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals so shall my servants startle the nations. Rulers shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For the servant grew up before the Lord like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground, having no form or majesty that we should behold, nothing in appearance that we should desire. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely, surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed, by our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all. He was oppressed and was afflicted, Yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is being sled to, led to the slaughter, and like an ewe that is silent before the shearers, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with affliction. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous and shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, 
because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered with the many transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John. They took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning, so Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Judean authorities replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not Jewish, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judean authorities. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king? You say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, he went out the, to the Judeans again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this, this man, man, but, but Barabbas. Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a rebel. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wore a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews, Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify, Crucify him! Crucify him. him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Judean authorities answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release Jesus. But the Judeans cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against Caesar. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Judeans, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with, with him. him! Away, Away with, with him. him! Crucify him. him! Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to a place called the Place of the Skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified Jesus, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written, and put it on the cross. It read, 
Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then Jesus said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. One of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Judean authorities, asked Pilate, to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now there was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified. And in the garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be Christ crucified and risen. Amen. Your choice. Pilate offered the crowds a choice. Release Jesus, the so-called king of the Jews, or release Barabbas, a bandit. And we know who they chose. Frederick Needner, a retired theology professor from Valparaiso, suggests that at the prompting of market forces, as well as human nature, there is now a whole menu of Jesus' choices. Which Jesus do you want? Take your pick, Needner says. Jesus as culture warrior, Jesus as party whip or guru, Jesus as recovery coach, Jesus as financial guarantor, wonder worker, Jesus as cosmic bellhop, Jesus as best buddy ever. John's account of the passion portrays Jesus as king reigning from the cross. But there's nothing king-like about him, at least the way we think of a royal figure who wields power. In fact, the two words that stand out this year for me in the Passion, the Passion according to John, are truth and power. 
There is a power struggle going on between Pilate and Jesus. Jesus says that he was born to testify to the truth. And Pilate says, what is truth? From the new truth social to lies and slander that mark our time. From the original sin of racism in our country to a reckoning and a time of truth-telling. Politics is part of the equation. The scene between Jesus and Pilate is political. Some say we shouldn't mix politics and religion or talk about that in church. There's no way not to. As Marcus Borg puts it, the Bible is filled with radical criticism of empire and all domination systems. The Bible passionately advocates for an alternate social vision. When Jesus is silent, Pilate declares that he has the power to release Jesus. But Jesus retorts, you would have no power over me unless it was given to you from above. So using a phrase from today, Jesus speaks truth to power. What is the worldly power we see today? Rising authoritarianism around the world? White Christian nationalism? What is masked as a concern for the people is really concern for certain people. Those who look like us or worship like us. The dominant culture. So which Jesus do you want? Several years ago, many of us in this congregation read the book Jesus and John Wayne. The author notes that many Christians in this country now equate Jesus with rugged masculinity, with patriarchy, with fear of Islam, with nationalism, with resistance to issues of race, sexual orientation, or gender, which they consider being woke. Which Jesus do you want? Which Jesus will save us from these perilous times? Jesus lays aside his power, his divine nature, takes the form of a servant, washes his disciples' feet, lays down his life for his friends, identifies with the last and the least, those scorned and forgotten, and is executed for challenging the religious and political systems of his day. And even though in John's gospel, Jesus' last words are one of triumph, it is finished. The Jesus we worship is weak. A crucified Messiah, a God who suffers with the wretched of the earth, a non-violent savior, who inspires us not to take up arms, but to love our enemies. A Lord who is the antithesis of Caesar and all worldly rulers. When we say Jesus is Lord, we are challenging all notions of empire and imperialism. If that's not enough, Jesus offends. He wasn't who people wanted him to be. Isaiah portrays the suffering servant as one from whom people hide their faces, despised and rejected. This afternoon, when the cross is carried high, we behold a God who's made known in weakness as St. Paul writes. And that has everything to do with our spiritual lives. Martin Luther declared that God is hidden. 
not revealed in glitz, not revealed in earthly glory, but hidden in suffering, hidden in shame, hidden in vulnerability. Christ in the manger, Christ hanging on the cross, Christ revealed in bread and wine, Christ present in our deepest heartache, our deepest pain, our deepest loneliness, our very mortality, our powerlessness, our weakness. Powerless. Powerlessness. The first step in recovery. Admitting that we are powerless. Powerless over our addictions. Powerless over sin. Powerless over our issues of control. Our desire to make life happen the way we want it to powerless over our helplessness to solve the problems of the world. Which Jesus do you want? The Jesus we acclaim this Good Friday, the Jesus that we adore, the Jesus we seek to emulate is among us this day, hidden in weakness. Soon we will sing, behold, behold the life-giving cross, the very power of God. We glory in the cross, for the cross is healing, the cross is victory, the cross is salvation, the cross is justice, the cross is mystery. And the cross is our resurrection. Amen.
a moment, we will kneel for the bidding prayer as we pray for the needs of the whole world. Then after the cross is carried in high above our heads, you are invited to come forward and offer a nonverbal sign of reverence. That could be as, simply, as simple as coming and pausing before the cross, uh, bowing, kneeling, touching the cross, or offering a kiss. Whatever seems a sign of reverence appropriate to you today, let us now kneel. Let us pray, dear family in Christ, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the Church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith. Proclaim your name and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for Elizabeth and Yehiel, our bishops, for Craig, Michelle, and Sheree, our pastors, for all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, deacons, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. And help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them new birth as your children and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago, you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the Muslim people, children of God's covenant with Abraham, and who also adore the one merciful God. Almighty and eternal God, the children of your covenant are more numerous than the grains of sand. Grant to all who share faith in you, the merciful judge of all humanity, to live in peace and tranquility. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who do not share our faith or do not believe in God. Almighty and merciful God, you gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names or honor mystery in diverse ways. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Let us pray for those living in Palestine, Ukraine, and in all war zones of the world, and for all who have fled the dread of violence and have been deprived of their homes. Almighty and eternal God, you have compassion on the lowly and the poor, but you throw down oppressors. As you guided Israel out of slavery in Egypt, so save in our day all victims of war and violence. Change the hearts of evildoers and let peace be victorious. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Father in heaven. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O oh, come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O oh, come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Oh.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 